Hey, it's Reactar, and I'm going to be starting a new series today on my channel. I know it's Super Mario Galaxy, which it's kind of weird for me to be starting this game since just last year I played Super Mario Galaxy 2 on my channel, but I am just sort of at a place, dude, we're going to be Peach. I'm just sort of at a place right now where I was, I could not think of a game to play on my channel. I don't know if I'm just in like, kind of like a down mode for what games I want to play or what's going on, but I just decided since I could not choose my next game, I would run over to uh, Target and pick up this game. So every hundred years, a comet appears in the skies with Mushroom Kingdom. The comet was so large one year, it filled the skies and sent countless shooting stars raining down. The Toads brought shooting stars to the castle, where they became a great power star. It should have been a very happy time for the citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom, but why wasn't it? That was the night of the Star Festival, held once every hundred years to celebrate the comet. Oop, okay, now we're gonna find out the real reason. Oh, does she read the whole letter? I'm guessing it's a cake, because that's like what Princess Peach does, but anyways, we're playing this game. No fucking holding back. This is the next game that I want to play on my channel. I can't even stress enough how much I love this game. Like, this is a game, as, as you know, because I like to sort of introduce the games on my channel that I like to play, and this is one game that I know it might sound crazy for such a, such a basic game, but when I think about games that I wish I could, like, go back and unplay them so I could re-experience them, I feel as though this game is very high on that list because this game has some of the best, funnest, most unique game mechanics of, like, any game I think I had ever played. This game, like, really defined the Mario platforming genre for me, too, because, admittedly, like, when I was younger, I'd beaten Super Mario 64, I'd never beaten, I still have never beaten Super Mario Sunshine. And when this game came out, I was a little bit hesitant to buy it because the only Super Mario platformer that I'd really put a lot of, like, effort into was Super Mario 64, which I had beaten, like, ten years or more before this game came out. And then suddenly this game was coming out, and it just looked so crazy with, like, the way gravity worked and the way the planets worked, it was such a unique idea. And it's weird that I'm playing these games backwards on my channel. I played Super Mario Galaxy 2 before I ever, well, before I played this game on my channel, I played them in order in real life. What's funny about this game, actually, is that I didn't actually own a copy of it. I had to go out and buy a copy of this game today so I could play it on my channel. I was just sitting there. I was sad because I haven't put a video up in like a week. And I sat there and I was like, dude, I have, to, I really want to record today, and I need a game. So I was like, dude, I have to play one of my favorite games of the last ten years. Easily one of my favorites. Best Mario platformer for me, at least. I'd say this game still might actually trump 3D World. And you remember, if you watched my 3D World playthrough, just how much I fucking loved 3D World. I, can I spin yet? Oh no, because the spinning is a feature that you get. Oh, but I can do that. The spinning is a feature that you get, but yeah. If you watched my 3D World playthrough, you will know that I love that game so much because it just had so many unique and totally new and fun aspects of the game. And I guess that's what I really look for in new Mario games is kind of like what new unique things they're throwing in, especially when you're, you know, your franchise has a huge, huge and long history of just like releasing a bunch of platformers and a bunch of RPGs. I mean, technically the Mario franchise, it's hard to classify it as an RPG franchise or a platforming franchise, but I feel like at the end of the day, or a sports game franchise, fuck that, I mean, shit, if you want to say that there's a certain thing associated with Mario, sports games is definitely on the list. But I think at the end of the day, the true, the true association that comes with Mario is the platforming association and so I feel as though this game for me, of the Super Mario platforming associative properties, I played this game and it blew me away in a way that I love Super Mario Galaxy 2. I love Super Mario 3D Land. I love Super Mario 3D World. 
as you can probably tell from my list, I was never really a 2D Mario platformer guy. Although, if I were to rank those, I'd probably say Super Mario Bros. 3 and then Super Mario World. Although I've not played Yoshi's Island, I know. Say something mean in the comments, be like, Raktar, play Yoshi's Island. Shit. I'm actually planning sometime this year and the next year to play Yoshi's Island on my channel with the help of some friendly guests, but I've just been so, like, I broke my ankle this year and it took a lot away, like, it took, it threw my scheduling and planning sort of out of whack for the year because I was just spending a lot of time kind of letting myself heal and just it was changing everything, but either way, not talking about scheduling anymore, back to talking about how much I love this game. Obviously this cutscene is way too long. You don't even need a long cutscene in a Mario game to explain. Although I do like that they did sort of be like, Peach is going to outer space, which is totally a new realm and dimension for her to be taken to. Shit, Bowser doesn't usually spend a lot of time in spaceships, but here we are with Bowser spending a lot of time in spaceships. I don't know. I guess he's turning over a new leaf and we have the friendly troops of this shit. By the way, I actually thought about playing this game on Dolphin, but I cannot get it to work properly on my computer, because this game, if you have ever seen, go look at Dolphin screenshots of this game. It looks sexy gorgeous. But by the way, I'm about to talk about something that I talk about often when I am playing Mario-style games, and that is... Oh, do I need to catch this thing? I assume I do. Yes, I'm jumping. But yeah, so... When I'm playing, like, Mario-style games on the newer consoles, I oftentimes sort of associate the way that things work with this idea that Nintendo, by doing stylized graphics, they can make the graphics a lot sleeker and sexier because they're not trying to do, like, realistic lighting. Like, basically, they get you, the user, to accept conceptually the idea that, um, they get you, the user, to sit there and be like, you know what, it's okay that this game is not gonna have, like, the best graphics in the world. Where do I hear that? So yeah, it's okay, you like, you the user sit there and you're like, it's okay that this game doesn't have the best graphics on Earth, because the fact of the matter is, uh, the game stands alone- oh, yeah, there we go, cool. The game stands alone with its graphics because they spend their time making the graphics that they do use look really sexy. It took me a while to say that idea because I was very concerned with the location of this bun, bunner, bunneroo. Although, dude, this game doesn't have like a. There's no cat suit. I'm so used to Super Mario, uh, 3D World now, where I've got a cat suit that lets me dash and go really quickly. And for some reason, I'm really struggling to catch this bunny. It's because I'm used to bunny missions. Oh, and he tells me where to look. Look at that. He even tells me where to look for his next buddy. He obviously, he's he's like, what it is, is this bunny is bitter, he's bitter that I caught him, and so he r quickly reveals the location of his friend because he's like, well, fuck this. He's like, if I'm if I'm gonna get caught, this asshole's gonna get caught too. In fact, these bunnies would be horrible mobsters if they're that quick to give each other up. I mean, obviously that's why they're not, damn it, I keep on long jumping because it's faster, but maybe I should just focus on my normal running right now, but that's clearly not working. But yeah, these guys would be horrible mobsters. They instantly give up their mobster buddies, like, the very second that they're told- Yeah, I should have hidden in the grass! See? They just, oh my gosh. Holy fuck, I feel so bad for whoever you have to protect when, like, Bowser comes and he's got you locked up in, like, a fucking little cell and he's picking your fucking fingernails off! Or I guess these guys don't have fingernails. He's picking your- oh wait, I heard the sound of- they make a twinkly sound, and I thought I was going towards the grass, but oh, he meant this grass, possibly? I don't know what grass he meant. Here we go. This is the- yep, that's the grass he meant. There's only like one grass on the whole island. It shouldn't have been so confusing to me, but as you know, I'm an idiot. I get confused easily. I'm an old crotch- I'm a crotchety old man. In my day, video games didn't have bunnies. They had Contra- in my day, video games had fucking Contra. And they didn't have Contra, they literally were Contra. But anyways, I got all these bunnies that probably took me an inanimately large amount of times, but now that you get the bunnies... By the way, I really hate this section of the game. It's funny that I'm talking about how much I love this game, but it now occurs to me... I guess when I first... when you first play this game, 
that part is still magical enough for you to be okay with it. But then it's like when I'm replaying it now- oh, crap. Dude, I was trying to see if I could- there we go. Do a sweet jump and not do the cake jumping up there. But, yeah, like... Why would you start your game with such a boring part? You'd think you'd want to start with something super exciting, but instead you start with some bunny chasing ass thing that goes really slow. But then, but like I said, maybe it's the magic factor. You watch, you play this game for the first time, and you're like, holy shit, I've never met Lumas in the Mario universe. All this is so magical. By the way, I always thought the skin colored Luma was creepy. Why does it have to be skin colored? Like, it's so weird. Can you just imagine, like, having a cat that is just, I mean, I guess Siamese cats, but even they're not skin co actually, some of them are, but just having a cat that has no fur and it's just skin colored, like, you think of Lumas and you're like, oh, they're yellow, they're pink, they're blue, they're all kinds of fun, crazy colors, but no, then there's this one Luma that just shaved off its yellowness or its blueness and it became skin colored, and you're just like, ugh, gross, it's gross to think about skin colored Luma, alright, here we go, so now, oh, he's gonna explain to me the update I can shake, Shaking as, if you've played these games, you know it lets me jump higher, it also lets me break ice crystals! Which needs to be done for me to open up the first thing, and here's where the game, I'd say, really takes off. Prepare your... Prepare your ears, my friends, because your ears are about to be accosted, but not accosted in a bad way. Your ears, if you're... Dear, dear viewer, your ears are about to be accosted with what is, in my opinion, some of the best Mario music ever, ever made. In fact, so I bought this game on my first break at... Yes, 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 I need to get Star Trunks. Star, I've already been doing it! Shut up! So yeah, I bought this game during my first break at work, and the whole day at work, just the concept of me playing this game on my channel made me just sit there and, like, hum music from this game. Like, I literally... I bought this game, and then I just walked around all day just being like, is that the sweet, sweet tunes of Mario playing in my head? I must hum along to the sweet... the sweet music playing in my head. Oh yeah, by the way, I think there's some other things I should probably demonstrate. Um, with certain enemies it matters. You can kill Goombas in this game by spinning or by jumping on them. Jumping, obviously, Mario is never going to be stupid enough to make a game where they're just gonna take away their, like, primary... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. They're not gonna just take away their primary means. So by the way, I flipped that, I'm gonna try and show this. If you flip a Goomba, but you don't spin it when you come up to it... Oh, did I kill all the Goombas? I won't be able to show it. Alright, cool, that's fine. So, anyways, one of those enemies... Okay, so there are, will be a Goomba left. So, if you do what he's telling me to do, you will not get coins, but sometimes that will benefit you, because sometimes in this game... Oh, I can't even show it. No, here we go. They will turn into star bits instead of coins, or in this case, keys. That was a horrible demonstration of concept, because <laughs> I needed to show that that dude was going to turn into something else, and instead I just showed that he's a, he has a key, which sucks. I feel really bad. I was super excited to pretend to be knowledgeable about this game. By the way, though, I would say this is a game that I can proudly call myself knowledgeable about. Now, oftentimes, I do talk about the fact that I am nominally knowledgeable on a lot of the games I play on my channel. Like, when I played Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I claimed to be at least reasonably knowledgeable. The number of playthroughs I've done of that game are so ridiculously large that I felt that I at least had some say to be known about that game. But this game, I can tell you with confidence that I have beaten it to completion. I have 100% of this game off camera before, which is something I know that I don't know if this is something to be proud of, but one thing I can say about that is that before now on my channel, there has never been a game that I've played that I've actually 100%ed off camera. In the past, when I have chosen to 100% a game on my channel, like Super Mario Galaxy 2, the trickery to that is that I have never, in fact, yes, there's buttons. Please, tell me about buttons. Actually, don't. I don't really care about buttons, so... If you would... If you would, uh, mind leaving those out, I would be very happy. Okay, good. They actually make it fun, and they'd be like, hey, they leave it open-ended. But yeah. I have 100%ed one other game on my channel. It was Super Mario Galaxy 2. That game I had beaten, but I hadn't 100%ed it. 
I promised that I was going to 100%. I hope nobody is sad about it, but I tried to 100% um, Super Mario 3D World, but I never did it because I got really unhappy with how hard the final levels were, and I just... Man, maybe someday I should go back. Maybe after I'm done with this game, I should do that. But anyways, this is a game, like I've been saying this whole time, that I have beaten to its entire completion before. And I can say that, unlike any other game on my channel, I have never done that, but this game, I love it so damn much that on my first playthrough, I was like, I have to beat this game. I have to get every fucking star because everything is so much fun in this game. Luckily, I think this series might turn out to be a little bit shorter than the previous series, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2, because there's only 120 stars in this game, and once you get them, Unless you decide to go collect them as Luigi, which, for all intents and purposes, does nothing. Uh, whatever, yeah. I'm not going to be going to get the stars as Luigi. And if I did, I definitely wouldn't show it on camera because it's all the same stars. But now, I must say... Welcome to... One of my favorite... It's hard to call it an overworld because it's just a little spaceship. But this is one of my favorite overworlds ever in games. And I like that... Unlike Super Mario Galaxy 2, where they just have a, a static map. Which, I mean, technically, once you go to the places, it's all just a map in this game. But, instead of a static map, they let you explore this cool ship. It's really awesome. Probably, I think, what really makes it is the music. Like, if I was to say why this place is so great, <laughs> is the music of this zone, of the Comet Observatory, always fills you with wonder and joy, and it makes you happy that you love America and love Japan or whatever because they made this game. I don't know. I'm obviously just going crazy right now, but I'm seriously just thinking about how I wish you would stop talking so we can start listening to the great music that goes along with this space station and so we can get on the way to collecting my special one. Who knows? Maybe my special one is Luigi. Maybe he got captured, but we already know he didn't. And in fact, Luigi is responsible for collecting some of the stars of this game. He's an okay dude. They still don't make him, you know, hero quality, but he's there, and he's collecting stars. He's out there, and there's some stars that you can only get with the help of Luigi in this game. But anyways, each of the zones in this game um, is just like a little, one of those little domes you go inside, and then you're on a map. So technically, I complain about choosing levels from a map, but in this game, you totally choose levels from a map, but it's different. I promise you. I swear, somehow in my game, or somehow in my brain, I have logicked out that it's actually different than that. But anyways, now, oh look, they even point me at the thing to be like, hey, this is the only place you can go, dumbass, don't try and go anywhere else. And the good music isn't here yet, so I'm gonna end this episode right here, and then in the next episode, I'm gonna be going right in that little green grassy ass dome right there. Oh, oh! I can go to the garage. I'm gonna be going to that little green grassy ass dome right there, right there, and I'm gonna begin the acquisition of stars, which is very important. This has been Raktar. Thank you for watching. <laughs>